Short, one short, on Thursday. That's okay. Is that a manual on that or it's just zoomed in all the way? Any other camera? We did order, order, five dollars and all the stuff. We organized the ancestral trace of the same history that every single meeting them, 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 Carried, 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 uh, uh, so yeah, so yeah our, our Camelot's office. office. Um, uh, we've been we working together the over the last. Well, I've worked with them for like twenty plus years, but uh, sort of their, their capacity for municipalities through our busy season was a little pinched this year. So they called us up and asked us to help out, and we uh, we do a few. So we sort of reallocated the, the jobs and that and took it on, but still the same KPMG office doing it, and worked with them on the transition. Uh, so I'm going to go through what I'll throw up first is our audit findings report. This document, this document talks about, talks about the highlights of the audit process, which I know is just fascinating for everybody on a Tuesday, Tuesday morning. So, so I'll just try, I'll just try and hit the highlights of. of so you see it all right, or you need yeah, to? Give me a second. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, so we changed, we changed our office, office um, and, and uh, uh, but I hopefully it was a pretty clean process. I've been big thanks to James for. for Getting for getting through it. it. We were just briefly, briefly talking before started. we started. Um, you know, the, you know, the, the, the core, core part of the audit, audit and everything was pretty routine, but this year there was a new standard that we had to deal with and bring in, which introduced this new liability onto your balance sheet for um, asset retirement obligations, which basically clean up with asbestos and things like that. So this is a new standard. It's been sort of lurking for a few years, but this is the year that we had to put it into effect. So there's a whole bunch of Accounting, accounting technicalities and estimates, and estimates and things we had, and things we had to go through on that process. So that was that was sort of the the cause of the headache this year. This year. I'd say all the other stuff, uh, James's James James information is great and easy to audit. Um, and uh, you know we just had to work together to get through this new standard and get that sorted out and deal with, as I say, the mechanics on those and get them into the books. 
So, so uh, uh, that sort of the highlights. highlights. Uh, uh, you can see this is the rest of the team. Craig and Brad. Craig and Brad was on speed dial with uh, James, particular James, particularly over the last two weeks, two weeks getting, getting it. it. Brought to, brought to conclusion here, here. so uh, credit, to credit to those guys and to James as well. Um, so, so, yeah, so yeah, we're so here we're here today, today, hopefully, hopefully getting, getting the, the statements approved, approved and, then and then we'll get everything finalized and so you can submit the, the, the financials, financials into the system. Uh, in, terms uh, in terms of highlights, of highlights things, so the key areas is tangible, tangible capital assets, assets as you'll know, you have big, big spend and big infrastructure with, uh, with Town Princeton, so a lot of a lot of expenditures going in that direction and reinvestment and infrastructure. So we definitely, we definitely uh, focus on that. On that. Reserve, uh, reserve contributions, contributions, just general expenses, payroll, and obviously, and obviously the, grants the grants that came in to fund, to fund a bunch of those, bunch of those tangible capital asset expenditures so uh, over the last years, couple of years, and the complexities, and the complexities around, around those grants, grants and the timing of when you bring those into revenue. We looked at that as I talked about asset retirement obligations, standard, new standard, and new standards, and new standards around, around financial instruments, which didn't really have much impact. So, um, so no big changes, no big changes to our plan. To our plan. Uh, no major uncorrected items. We just had some items that got corrected in the statements. So, um, the only thing really new, as I mentioned, is on this new asset retirement standard. No control deficiencies. Uh, no, no major concerns in that regard. So. When we, when we do an audit, we have, audit, we have this thing called materiality, materiality and it just is a sort of, is a, sort of a number buffer, buffer that basically, that basically is, you know, is, you know if, if there's a timing, timing difference, if things, exactly things aren't exactly down to the penny in one year versus, year versus another, another, no one's really going no to really care because it's not really, really going to change your mind, change your mind on anything. So it kind of gives a little bit of a number buffer to allow just sort of timing differences and things that may not be perfect for the accounting standards to slide through that really don't matter. So if we so audited, audited things, things, things and made things down to the penny, we'd be still doing this for quite a while, more than four months after year end. So, so we determine that based on uh, revenues. It's about 2.2% of revenues, so four to 12,000. We don't want to sort of push, push up to the, the upper boundaries, boundaries of that. We really only really care about things over $21,000. I mean, if you find things that are, you know, uh, a little smelly, smelly or something like that, that we're going to be more worried, worried about it versus, versus again, just like accounting uh, issues, uh, issues on a sort of how you're recognizing a, a grant con or grant, grant revenue or something like that. So, anyways, that's, that's materiality. Uh, this, is uh, this is a standard slide, slide we're obligated to look at management override. Don't, don't have any concerns, but we have, but to, we have to look at it to do our professional standards. So, we do a bunch of testing to make sure that you know nothing's really sort of cooking the, cook the books, that kind of thing, or overriding or estimates, or there's, there's a bias, bias in there, but get no, get no concerns around any of that. Uh, tangible, tangible capital assets, assets. So, so this is the highlights of what we do. We looked at all the additions and how things get amortized. So the only thing, the only we, thing we saw around all of this was amortization of roads was miscalculated, so that got fixed. fixed. Uh, and, and then, then reserve, reserve transactions. transactions. Yes, yeah, so we looked around all the reserve contributions, uh, distributions, distributions and no issues were noted there. Uh, uh, expenses. expenses. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so the, only the only thing on the expenses, expenses side back to tangible capital assets is just a, just a um, uh, sort, of uh, sort of subsequent, subsequent events testing, testing that uh, didn't, get didn't get posted in the, in the right period. period. So, so that got fixed. A grant, a grant revenue, revenue. There, was there was a quirk there, there with one grant, grant um, where, where uh, you got, got a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar grant, but um, you, had you had to spend a million to get the seven fifty. So, so I think, I think and essentially what was getting, getting recognized was just up to the first seven fifty. So again, so a, a bit of a twenty five percent contribution there that had to that impact of the timing when that grant came in. So that that got completed in twenty twenty four. It was the egg dev grant for the plaza and for the campground. So as soon as we corrected it, it was fine. The, the money was already allocated. It was just misallocated when we did the uh, the uh, general ledger over to the account. So. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think when, think you, when you, you complete that project in 2024, you got fully topped up on that grant. So yeah, just, yeah, just a timing issue around, around that one. So that so was, that was the, the excitement around that. Around that. Uh, asset, asset retirement, retirement obligations. obligations. So, so and again, this is really around asbestos, site cleanup, site cleanup oil, tanks, oil tanks, that kind of that kind stuff. stuff. So, so but generally, generally it's asbestos, asbestos for old buildings when construction contained a lot of asbestos and you'll on the cleanup, cleanup side of things, things it's expensive to dispose, dispose. so you have to factor, you have to factor that, that in and figure out, out 
how much it's going to cost and when are you going to spend it and make an estimate for that and put it on your books and sort of build it up with some inflation and discount it back through the time value of money or the discount rate. So again, a bit of a technical exercise to get that all done. So. Uh, and, yet, and yet we had to go, had to go back, back where there's a, there's a, there's a choice for how that got rolled onto your books because it's a new standard. So you went back, so you went back and actually restated, restated 2022 or at the beginning of 2022 as, as one of the options, set it, set it up and then rolled it forward into 2023. So, so all, those mechanics, all those mechanics all got flowed through the statements, which I'll review when we get into the statements. But effectively you set up a, a big liability on your balance sheet and as time goes by, You'll, you'll sort of work close towards, towards um, that actual cleanup, cleanup and, continue and continue to refine those estimates, those estimates as it sort of speeds, speeds up or slows down on that timing. And that, those, that, numbers those numbers will roll through your book as long as the actual expenditures of them. So, but I think but at the immediate, immediate uh, time, time being, it's just a number and there's no sort of immediate plans for uh, for teardown. But maybe James, you can correct me if I'm wrong here in terms of site demolition and yeah. So I think it's more future right. items so we were, we were required to make a number of make assumptions, assumptions for, uh, uh, for asset for retirement asset obligations, obligations. Um, um, the number, number of the buildings, buildings the town of Princeton owns, owns are, are um, um, north of 50, 50 years old, old and they've been fully advertised and, uh, and uh, those are relatively those are straightforward we asked to be there, there, there uh, continue to use it 25, 25 years, years and then and, uh, and then move forward with their calculations the buildings that were not fully advertised um, um, which, which we only had, we only managed to get six out of 23. Uh, the uh, arena is almost fully advertised, it's almost 50 years old. But um, uh, for any uh, building that was less than 50 years old, we recalculated all the uh, amortization for this, uh, for this new standard. Um, backdated it to time it to 2022, rule forward a year, and future will be a rule forward as Murray's learning. But um, quite the quite exercise, the exercise quite, the, uh, uh, quite the quite the intensive the calculations on this one. So, uh, so uh, um, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it, uh, um, we we did, we did estimate, estimate we would be, we would be keep, keeping keeping all buildings, all buildings with the exception of the Mason Hall because that's because that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, due, due to be demolished, demolished uh, shortly. Uh, shortly. Um, uh, we uh, uh, timed uh, everything else for twenty five years out. Yeah so, yeah, so again, it's a bit of an accounting exercise for the time being, and then you'll start actually spending real dollars. I say starting with the hall there. Oh, and, and the only other the exception was the landfill. The landfill, as per as the consultant, um, um, should, should remain active, active until 2117. This process is a one time time. Well, you have to maintain it every year, but the heavy lifting is all done. In the, last in the last month, month or two, so, so it's all kind of, it's set, all kind of set up now, and then I think then you can focus more on the cash. I mean, there'll still be some mechanics for you know, as time, as time goes, on, goes on, you get closer to tearing things down. You sort of have to, yeah, to give to sort of give some perspective. Um, after the uh, after the, uh, after the uh, senior accountant was here, here um, um, probably took us probably about took three about days, days to do all the do corrections all the with the road amortization. And, uh, and, and the calculations, the calculations for, that. for that. This ARO, this ARO finished, ARO finished last, last night at about three o'clock. Um, it uh, took it probably, probably five, five weeks, weeks to get all the numbers, numbers balanced, balanced and get all the get estimates, all the in, estimates and, in and process everything. It's, it's, been, it's a been a fairly monumental task. But the, but the, the heavy lifting is done. Done. Oh, oh. Year to year, it's going to be. We'll probably have probably data estimates once every five to seven years. Just make sure we're not missing anything. If there's any major construction inflation, we'll have to take that into account. Uh, discounting rates always change based on bond rates and how the economy is doing and such, inflation, things like that. But um, from year to year, this process will be much easier. And let me sort of joke that it is an accounting exercise, but. You know, when you do when go, you do tear, go tear something down, down, there is an extra cost for the, say, the asbestos cleanup. cleanup. So, so um, it'll, it'll become real as you know, as things sort of age out and get replaced. So, so I think it's good just to get it on the horizon so you can budget for these things. So that was the, the excitement around the asset retirement obligations. Financial instruments is sort of a much ado about nothing. It's just sort of a bunch of uh, technical accounting issues about how you record your financial instruments. like. Uh, Market, market uh, instruments, uh, instruments uh, 
derivatives, that kind of stuff. So again, no impact happened with that. Just standard. standard. So, we so we get into, into the correction. correction. So, so these journal entries, journal entries here really, really just speak to uh, setting about setting, setting up the amount starting in the opening of 2022, rolling it through the 22 period. So it impacts, you know, surplus amortization and setting up assets, setting up, assets, setting up, setting up this liability. Um, and then, and then you roll into 2023 and then there's an impact as, uh, as, a, as a year marches on, on and you amortize the asset, the asset value down, down and you and sort of uh, have this liability that's getting closer. Getting closer. So, but the, but the time value of money, as I say, is discounted. discounted. So as time goes by, that starts to grow uh, towards real dollars. So. And it's important to note that um, it says misstatements. Usually a misstatement is generated when I screw up something royally and, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then it goes under this report, report um, something more than 21,000. This misstatement is caused based on the fact that I didn't implement the standard in the past. So it's a change in the standard. It's not necessarily something that we misstated. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, oh, a valid, <laughs> that's a valid. That's a valid point. Yeah, and and because I think we were working together to to work through the standard. You know, like it's not like you work you worked with a consultant and kind of got the parameters around it. Then we got into the weeds on it and figured out the technical journal entries and exactly what numbers had to go where. So I think just working collaboratively in that process sort of like shows up on the schedule versus it wasn't booked sort of the day one when we showed up. But next year, it should be uh, all under control. Um, so then this goes back to the uh, tangible capital asset purchase. So um, really, really it's the setup of the asset, the asset and the payable, so, so no income impact, really. impact really. And then, and then you, uh, uh, well, other than, other than the, fact the fact that it was fully funded, funded so, so you set up the receivable and the, and the grant revenue related to it. So that brought that, brought that uh, grant, revenue grant revenue into the books for the year. For the year. Um, we talked about the roads getting uh, fixed up. So I think it was basically just being uh, over some items are being over amortized, over amortized into a negative value. So it's just a spreadsheet. It's important to know that I did get the amortization schedule from KPH. Yeah. yeah. We'll throw those. We'll throw the other guys under the bus. So. So then, so there, then was there was a, just to get another one, didn't impact impact, impact, impact income, income, just a reclassification, reclassification of your balance sheet between, between receivable and deferred revenue. revenue. Uh, uh, and then, and then that last one, one was that one with the 750,000 grand revenue and the having to contribute a million to get 750,000 back. So it just impacted the timing on the getting the rest of that grant revenue in. So that, so that was that. Uh, yeah, same, no controlled efficiencies, uh, no issues around estimates or presentation. So everything was good there. Uh, what I'll do is maybe just flip to the financial statements. I mean, these things are four months old, so I'm sure you're well aware of the, the meat of the, of the numbers. So you have your report, our report, and it's important. That's what you pay for. And so, and so, you know, you know, in financial, financial statements, statements for a municipality are kind of quirky in terms of the presentation. They're not like not like a balance sheet that they refer to, because they don't have like assets equaling liabilities and equity. You have this presentation where you have your financial assets, less your financial liabilities, and your net financial assets. And then later on, the non-financial assets at the bottom and gets your surplus. So. Slightly, slightly different, different presentation than a normal balance sheet, sheet but focusing, focusing on, on you know, your, your financial assets, assets and liabilities, and liabilities you know, things on the asset side, side are fairly consistent year over year in terms of cash, but quite a big, quite a big increase in these accounts receivables, receivables, receivables as you're waiting for these grant funds to come in. So, um, so you have a healthy, healthy surplus, but cash wise, you're still waiting on almost $10 million of that to, to roll in the door. So James, you were saying that it's a bit of a process to extract those funds out of the. Yeah, we're still waiting for approximately $4 million from, uh, from uh, emergency funds from flood. Um, the, the EMBC, now EMCR has had difficulty amongst you know, us, us and Mary and, and absolutely Chilliwack, it's, it's been well documented in the news that they're just having difficulty processing these things. Um, we are uh, waiting we, for the we, arena grant to come through still. There's some bureaucratic, bureaucratic hang-ups hang um, on the federal government, government level. level. Um, 
the uh, the um, still with some grant funding from UCM from FCM. That's just a short project. So they give us the money up front. We only get only two percent at the end, but we actually complete the work. So. Um, some of them are just timing issues, some of them are legitimate, some of them are doing one and two, they're still dealing with insurance, some on some evaluation of the buildings, so that is also part of the 10 million, so yeah, that's a big number, I'm not concerned about it, it's all from reputable sources, it's been vetted through the auditing process, and they're satisfied with its collectability. But, but, um, um, but it is but a large, large number, so, so uh, it'll be, it'll be one, of one, of one of my one of my focuses for the controller. Yeah. yeah, and then there's sort of a consistency on land held for resale, but 1.7 million, just a little bit of long-term investments. And then so you got your again your total financial assets of just about 31 million dollars. Then getting into the financial liability side again, payables uh, pretty consistent year over year as things turn over and things have to get paid for. Deferred revenue again fairly consistent, a bit of an increase, 600 thousand there. So again, timing of when you get dollars and funds and when you spend them and how they get brought into revenue. Um, again, that's quite a large, quite a large number, number given all the grants you've had in the last couple of years. I don't, don't really know, really know what a normal run rate, run rate would be for, for town of Prince. And maybe, maybe the deferred revenue is large. large. Um, yeah. that, just that just goes to the fact, fact that we have, have a lot of projects project that, that have already been already funded, funded, specifically with flood, flood, flood mitigation. mitigation. Uh, the, the, the well one project, the well four project that we started soon. Um, the, uh, yeah, all the, all the, all the sort of flood, flood aspects of that, to that um, um, is large, large. Uh, the Boring uh, Communities Fund is the revenue, community. so that's $2 million a week here for the fire, fire hall. hall. Um, so, so, uh, so just the project that, that, um, are to be are done, be done, we can done. just have to pass the patients, we can't do everything immediately, some things run here and here. Yeah, and you don't really, I mean, you don't really want, want the damage, but sort of a good problem is that you have the cash and just got these, got these projects stacked up and ready to go. So, uh, and then again, debt pretty consistent, just a little bit of pay down year over year. And then there we see that asset retirement obligation of one point nine million dollars, which is the estimate for cleanup of all these sort of buildings and landfill. As mentioned, the landfill is way out in the future, but it's sort of like if you had to clean it up today, how much would it cost? And there's a number on the on that. Uh, on the balance sheet related to that. So again, your, so again, your net, net financial assets, assets going up from like 6.8 to 9.1 million, just sort of showing, showing the, the sort of extra, extra cash around the, and the projects to be spent. So again, again a lot of that is tied, is tied up in receivables, so it's not in your bank account at this point, but to be collected. Uh, uh, and then, so you get, so you get into, into the three categories, categories of non-financial non assets. assets. You can see just general, general supplies, supplies, pretty consistent year over year, same with prepaids. And you'd expect those to be consistent year over year, and they are. And then you get into your tangible capital assets, which is 75% you know, of your surplus balance, really. So you got $33 million there, and you can see that reinvestment of the year. I believe, I believe it was eight million or so uh, reinvested projects, projects that actually happened and assets, assets were purchased less than, less than you amortize a little bit of that each year as you use it. So, um, so that's the, the statement, statement of financial position. New construction is over nine, so uh, amortization dropped down to about eight. But, um, yeah, nine, nine million, million. Considering, considering that when I started with the municipality, that was, that was struggling, struggling to push more. So, more. so um, if you, you need, need obvious evidence of, of, of the municipality, municipality investing in, in, in the roads, roads or water or sewers or buildings, or buildings that's, 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 that's never right there at any point. Um, you know, uh, we, we spent we almost half, half of our, of our um, fiscal, fiscal capacity, capacity this year on capital assets. So, so I think that's, that's important, important for all to know. I think there's a saying, don't let a good crisis go to waste. And so you know, I don't want to have this flood, but I think you guys have done well for, for grants and rebuilding that infrastructure. So, uh, so getting into your statement of operations, so sort of a normal income statement. 
you so you can see this total, total revenue, revenue in all the different categories. categories. So, so big picture, it's 14.9 14. 14. million uh, last year, year and up to almost 19.2. So taxation revenue. So, so I think that story is really the win around the uh, found taxation revenue. It's sort of a bit of a one-time bump with an ongoing contribution that's going to occur there. So you've probably already been through, been through that, that one. That was the BC Hydro. So um the yeah the um um under under the uh, local government act uh, all utilities that operate within town boundaries are supposed to pay one percent of their net revenue to uh the municipality annually um fortis does uh telus does east link does for cable vision um but uh but the one thing we noticed is that hydro was not and BC, and BC Hydro, Hydro provides, provides the electricity, electricity for Copper Mountain Mine, which is so which so is within, within the town boundary. And, and as soon as we had we persuaded, persuaded the powers that be that it was, was they were they sending, sending um, that, that payment to the surveyor of taxes in Victoria in lieu for the regional district. So they still considered the mine within the regional district boundaries. So as soon as we persuaded them that was incorrect, uh, that, uh, that money was, money was uh, the uh, port of the municipality uh, for the last, uh, the last eight fiscal, fiscal years, years in the amount of approximately $2.2 million. Um, um, annually, annually moving, moving forward, forward uh, uh, that uh, amount that would get boosted by about 400000 So, uh, so uh, it's a very significant very number, number, and, and uh, I'm glad, glad we got, got a good resolution for that. that. So. You probably set the expectation, expectation you can find four hundred grand every year, but <laughs> see how you do on that one. But yeah, that was yeah, a nice win. win. And so then, so then to get it down into the rest of the category, so user fees again pretty consistent. Um, the, grant the grant funds were up uh, almost one point eight. I think you mentioned the growing communities. There were some new funds flowing around the province, so uh, that money came in. Princeton there. Uh, other excitement. I think investment income up seven hundred thousand dollars. So just more cash lying around. And interest rates, rates are actually more meaningful, meaningful now. So, so you have some investment income. Uh, the, uh, land the land sales, sales you can see in 2022 has some significant land sales. They're only down to 65,000 this year. And then everything then else sort of nets out to just almost similar, similar to, to prior year. Nothing of significance really in any of those categories. On the expense side, um, so the big changes around that, I mean, in total, they're down 600,000. So there's a 1.9 million reduction in protective services, offset by 321 increase in uh, recreation, cultural services, and 890,000 increase in transportation. The other one is sort of net additions of about $100,000. So. Yeah, Again, some, some wins and some shifting, some shifting of categories around there, but overall down 624. Uh, and, and then below, below the line there, you see that proceed from insurance claims. Claim. So there's a little bit of money came in 2022 and 2.1 million coming in 2023. So that also, that also boosted, boosted the, the bottom line. Uh, and, and then that, that uh, other, income other income is the uh, community forest, which is essentially break even for the year. Uh, so, so that, that one, and then you get down to the annual, annual surplus in total of about $10 million dollars versus four last, last year. year. So, so you tack that, that on to the $32 million you had at the start of the year, and you get to this 42671 surplus. surplus. Which again, a, bu a bunch of that is really invested in your infrastructure, say three quarters of that was invested in infrastructure. And I think the, a bunch of the rest of the financial surplus is going to go into infrastructure uh, in the near future. So you're starting to see, see this change, change in the surplus for the year and change in net financial assets, which is a bit of a funny schedule. I think the more relevant thing is really just what happened cash wise. So you have these four categories of cash operating, capital, investing, and financing. So we, so we take the annual surplus, which is the accounting income, and then sort of add back the non cash items like am primarily amortization is the big one. But we have the secretion that I mentioned on asset retirement obligation, which is you have a liability and you're marching towards it. So you have to um, sort of get towards those real dollars and recreate up to that number. Bit of an accounting thing. And then the next bucket of items in there is your balance sheet changes. So um, your accounts receivable. Um, Sort of, sort of uh, increased, increased by five million dollars, a bit of a burden on cash there. So, um, and the other, and the other categories were roughly the same, offset a little bit by that deferred revenue as a net increase 
coming in there. So at the end, at the end of the day, of the day operationally, operationally, it's saying that $7.1 million uh, came, in came in the door uh, for operating. operating. And, then and then you spend this $8.9 million on capital assets. assets. Um, you uh, got, some uh, got some money back from, from the community forest, 265. Uh, and, then you, uh, and then you paid down, down your debt for 190. So, so again, if you, again, if you sort of focus on those big categories, $7 million dollars coming in from operations, 8.90 out for assets, some, some money back for Forest Corp, Corp and, then and then paying down, down some debt. debt. So, uh, at the end of the day, $1.7 million dollar decrease in cash. So, so started, the started the year with 20.6, ended with 18.9. So that's, that's the, the, sort of the cash, cash reality, reality of things that happen through your financial, financial statements. statements. The, rest the rest of the statements, statements are all pretty consistent in prior year. year. You get into the exciting uh, policy, policy notes, notes that we have to include in there. In there. So there's, so there's uh, uh, nothing, nothing really of significance in there. Um, you know, it talks, talks about tax collected for other agencies, but then you get into this one asset retirement obligation. So I know tonight. After the, After the hockey game, game when you're bored, board, you might want to go through and read through this uh, uh, accounting policy note, put yourself, yourself to sleep as to, as to what, what sort of, sort of goes, goes on with this account, account and why it's set up uh, and what was done, done there. So uh, those are the nitty gritties around all of that. Uh, then, uh, then you get through the rest of the statements that we talked about, adoption of the new standard. But then you but then get into the, the sort of the distant details on your financial, financial statements, on the key items, items of cash, or your breakdown, what's on deposit, what's in money market funds, funds what's, what's in the debt reserve fund, fund the municipal finance, finance authority, authority. Yeah, and so pretty consistent as you sort of place excess cash, cash in money market funds. funds. Um, again, you get into the accounts receivable, what's sort of the tax is consistent in this big bump in grants that you got $9.4 million as of December that you're waiting to collect on. Uh, and, then and then in your investments, again, we got the uh, subsidiary uh, for the community forest, forest so 33 percent owned. So basically, there's not much equity in that. Um, so you can see the one third interest is about two grand. So not nothing is significant. That basically ran at a break even for the year. Uh, accounts payable. This is really just a required disclosure for sort of what's in there for wages payable. Uh, and government remittances. So again, those are just required disclosures. Then you get into this deferred, deferred revenue number and the breakdown of it. Of it. So, um, and again, what's what's been unspent? So you got 10.7 in total, with the bulk of it being flood grants, and then a few other uh, smaller items like uh, sitting in there. Tangible capital assets, just the details and all the breakdowns for cost additions. Category, category amortization, amortization you know estimated useful life, useful life and how you're writing it off over time so again, so again just to break down of all those numbers which really, really that's the net 33.2 million on the bottom right that goes to your balance sheet in total and then this is the number for the prior year uh, a little bit of a breakdown on assets under construction which haven't been amortized they got six million dollars uh still under construction waiting to be put into service at december 31. There was nothing contributed uh, for the year. And then you get the, you get the breakdown of your surplus. Um, so uh, as mentioned, a bulk of that is sitting in your tangible capital assets and you have a bunch of reserves set aside. So this is just going through these reserves that you've set up with the more significant ones really being that uh, future amenity line, water and sewer project and that growing communities. I'd say the big ticket items within that 16.7 of reserves. Uh, and all the other sort of smaller pieces within that. Uh, taxation, what's happening in taxation, so what you've collected again. You see that, that first line item with that BC Hydro win, really, and then the rest of it's fairly consistent year over year. Uh, required disclosure on contingencies, not much there. Pension liability, again, just standard disclosure, and the municipal pension plan gets remeasured every few years. Uh, and, that and that what you pay into that, in that plan, and then the fact that the plan's being revalued, but generally they're well funded. So, look on what that stays the same. Uh, we're part of the disclosed budget, so that's in there. And then you get into all the segmented information of all the different services that you provide, and the breakdown of revenue uh, and expenses within all those different segments and services. So, 
again, fairly, fairly consistent, consistent allocations are, uh, over, over prior years. years. I don't know if you have any comments, comments, on, comments on that, James, James on these specific, specific buckets, buckets or? It's important to it's important note that, that this is prepared uh, to satisfy uh, the requirements of the province of British Columbia. Columbia. It's not necessarily, not necessarily um, the breakdown, breakdown that, that we would we use, use to measure, measure whether, whether a department, department is profitable, profitable or not, uh, whether, whether it's, uh, whether it's whether deficient or surplus. Or surplus. Um, we use different we use measures. measures. So, so, um, take, take the take bottom, the bottom line, annual surplus, and plus the rate of salt. 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 Um, um, it's, it's great for comparison purposes for what the province does, does but it's, it's kind of loud for, for, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going, going to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to lose uh, it on Jim daily because it's a deficiency of $580,000 in the transportation budget. So, um, almost every municipal government has a deficiency condition. That tells the problem. Yes, we need more drinks. So, so that's, 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 that's the kind of use they get out of this report. report. Not necessarily for us to point fingers at this block. Good point. Uh, and uh, and again, again, prior year numbers for that well, as well. Then so then you get, you get into this asset, asset retirement obligation, obligation and sort of this no really, no really talks, talks really through like certain key balance, balance sheet items, items that where they were. Um, you had a liability set up for the solid waste landfill closure. So that just disappeared and it got bundled in with the asset retirement obligation. So you can see it really was 900,000 before and under the new standard, it's 1.8. Going into, going into 2022, 2022. And, then and then there's a bit of a bump, bump to your uh, to your assets or surplus. Uh, so yeah, so just sort of the numbers, the numbers that fall out of that. But I think the big important one in there again is going from your old landfill liability, liability under the old standard of 900 up to 1.8, really to include that. that the asbestos, the asbestos cleanup, cleanup effectively, effectively and then the new mechanics and the, the math around everything under the new standard, which would impact well. that as well. And then, and then for last, last year's service, service again, you can see sort of how things got impacted. A whopping, whopping $163 dollar adjustment, adjustment to recreation and cultural services. services. Uh, <laughs> because the arena is almost uh, there. Right. Yeah, yeah. so a small, small change there. there. More of an impact, uh, small or impact. small impact utility. on utility. Uh, uh, and again, so you can just see the changes there on the, on the statement, of statement of operations for how things change, so. Uh, bottom, line, uh, bottom line, 325 change on your uh, annual surplus there for, this is for, 20, this is for 2022. So this is just rolling the standard back as mentioned under the option to do this retrospective adjustment. So that's the, so that's the asset retirement obligation and debt. debt. So, so no changes, changes in the pieces of debt, pieces of debt. Uh, still, uh, still four, four and you just really just pay them down. Um, so you have, so you have these floating, floating rates, rates and where they're at as of December, December, which are starting to creep up a little bit uh, on a couple of them. Uh, so again, I don't think there's any surprise there as you pay the MFA uh, financing down. And you can see there on the the bottom ones are going to be, you know, gone by 2027. The other ones are 2032, the more significant pieces. So, oh, sorry, 2052. So the top two are water and sewer plants. The bottom two are our vehicle loans that we have uh, for our purchase uh, the new truck. Yeah, sorry, yeah, the interest reset in 2032, and then another 20 years after that. Uh, and, uh, and then it just shows the schedule, the schedule of, of you know what you're paying out each year. So, so roughly two hundred thousand a year uh, with payout some payout extra, extra than in twenty twenty seven. And when, and when that gets paid out, their annual, annual payment goes down a little bit. So uh, uh, and then just the uh, the, flood, the, uh, the flood, as you know about and what's going on there with the grant revenue and things flowing in for that. Some more details. Yeah, nothing really groundbreaking within that. Standard yeah, these standard related party, party, party transactions. So, what you, so what you provide for the Force Corp, Corp of twenty four thousand for administrative services, and then they owe you roughly twenty five thousand dollars that's sitting in accounts receivable. Uh, and then we get and then we into, get into uh, uh, growing communities fund and, and what happened. So there was a balance at the beginning of the year, really just accrued some interest, and then you had some eligible costs. So just starting to dig into those funds. So. Yeah, James, James, I don't know if you have any comments on that in terms so, of spend. Uh, yeah, growing community funds, funds on your, your required schedule, schedule, schedule for it for within the financial statements. Um, um, the 1.936 1. 1. came in last year. year. That was the amount we received. Um, 
there was a there couple was of very small, very small um, um, project costs, costs around, around um, um, uh, some designs and some signage design in the fire hall, fire hall uh, mostly uh, for the Minister of Minnesota. Yeah. And, and uh, the, the interest the accrued, interest accrued uh, like I said, uh, we did very good, very good, just the interest in our bank account this year, so it actually accrued more than we spent at it. So still working on a couple more. Of some uh, financing some options, options for the fire hall, and then hopefully, and hopefully it eats us up. It has, it has to be has used up. up. Uh, uh, um, I believe by 2027, I want to use it up. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, we're uh, uh, still design phase and trying to figure out how to buy this. So. Yeah, and it's like you noted, it's sort of a required disclosure. They want to track this, I guess, specifically on the spending versus some of the other grants that are just sort of lumped in there with deferred revenue. It's, uh, it's killing a fly with a slow jam. That's the process they get so hopefully. Yeah. So again, I think, yeah, again, for me, the highlights, again, again thanks to James once again for getting through the process and particularly with that new standard. It was a bit of mental gymnastics and the exciting accounting debate about interest rates and inflation and things like that. But we're just basically wanted to make sure that it was in line with the standards and the math all worked. So we uh, we came to a mutual agreement and we're happy with the estimates for costs and everything. So we're satisfied that that got all set up properly. And then, you know, I think more importantly that you had these grants come in, you got a nice surplus, you're spending it all on your tangible capital asset reinvestment as you should. So no real surprises. And I think like James said, the core operations are pretty consistent year over year. And you know, sort of again, the main part of the audit take three, four days, and then the, the cleanup took a bit more. So now that we're through this, it should be much simpler, shorter process uh, next year. So that's uh, that's the highlights of the uh, of the audit. So. <laughs> we, we, is there anything in there for the Brown Bridge? That's something that we're considering in the future. That that'll be part of the budgeting process for the uh, yeah for, uh, for the capital capital fund. So, so not not not, not these days. Yeah, so, we have the other sort of yeah, yeah, the other sort was uh, uh, quite way back. We talked about raising money. 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 Come, come, I presume it was coming coming from the federal federal money coming from the province. Yeah, so yeah, that's so that, uh, uh, the, the, some, some of the, um, the, um, the, uh, the accounts receivable, receivable have been lot, uh, uh, quite a bit quite of, bit uh, of uh, grant payment for, uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, different projects that we're doing around the town. town. One of them, One of them is, is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the plaza at the campground. campground. So, um, so um, because we were because almost, we were almost complete, complete, um, um, I included, I included right up to the maximum. Um, um, for the for grant funding, grant funding and, and your the town funds, and, and, and the auditor wanted us to put it at 75. So, so that was the that correction, correction for this year. This year. Uh, we've uh, exhausted we've the grant, grant already. already. Uh, we're, uh, we're in the process of spending it, so, so that should be coming through within the next month or two. I think we have a drop dead deadline to put it on the big board by June 1st. There is funding coming. Um, well, it does it does it does it does actually capitalize capital 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 um, and then expand it again, again uh, because, uh, because of the, the uh, um, um, just the way just it's the way set, set up. up um, um, the, the, it's, it's funny it's owed to us, so it does accrue interest that way. But then again, it's expended as a as a project cost. So there's hidden interest. Fees now that, that we have, we have a significant, significant amount of money that's over to us. Lastly, uh, very, very used, used to a number, number of numbers of values, values, like some of ours are. How do we, we rate in terms of financial uh, uh, well being in comparison to the well that's, well, that's a bit of a tricky one. I think, and, and have you guys, guys uh, I mean, comparable size, 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 yes, yes, but I think with the whole flood situation and the grant, you guys yeah. like have this sort of a strange blip going through your system over the like, three, four, four, or five year period here as you're getting all these funds and spending more than normal. So I think it'll probably level out sort of in a couple of years to a more routine, you know, deferred revenue, grant money coming in. 
and capital app, capital asset expenditures. So I'd say right now, like again, there's lot there's lots of money sitting there and projects in the books to be completed. Let's say there's a bit of a choke point in terms of getting things done. But so I'd say right now, you know, you guys have substantial funds to you have things that you have to reinvest in. And so. Getting so back getting back to a more normal, normal uh, cycle in the next few years would be right, interesting to see. That situation is similar to yeah, I yeah, think I, every municipality, municipality goes, through goes through a cycle of when they got to rebuild the arena or a swimming pool or whatever it may be, and you run it out for thirty years, and then they got to get some financing and redo it again, like in Vernon now or about to get a bunch of money for a new active living center, but you know that that old arena. Served its purpose, purpose for a long time, time and you build, you know, build a new hockey rink, rink now it's a new pool. So, so again, you know, again, it really just depends on, on where you're on your life cycle of, of your, of your big you know, expenditures like, like that. So, so I'd say that, that debt load isn't, isn't too, too extreme. extreme so, so um, and I, I looked at the numbers and I don't, again, you said it just now, James, in terms of what the bigger pieces of debt were related to financing of for the MFA debt. Where was that? Here we go. Here we, we, got, go. we got the 5.5. And, and then the water, the water system, system and sewer, sewer and, and water, water system is in, so in the so note. So again, again that, goes that goes back to when you sort of put those, put those uh, upgrades, upgrades in. So, so uh, in terms, uh, of, in terms of, of other community assets, assets there's, there's not, not a lot of debt on that stuff. If you talk about the hockey rink, I think within that asset set retirement obligation, I don't know how much life you got left in that. It's almost fully amortized, but you're probably going to use it for another, hopefully, 10 plus years. Yeah. 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 So again, I think there's a bunch of community assets that are somewhat fully paid for. So, and you know, but again, 10, 20, 30 years start planning out for replacement of this stuff and making sure you have reserves. Set aside, set aside and you know this hydro, hydro funding is going to help maybe keep paying, keep paying for services and hopefully, and hopefully building, building up some reserves for replacement and the longer, sort of the longer term projects down the road, down the road. but yeah, so yeah. I guess to answer, so answer your question you got a bunch of money floating around for current infrastructure, infrastructure longer term community assets, assets. The, the financing, financing doesn't seem too heavy so thank you I'm sure, I'm sure your taxpayers are all happy with what they're paying and the value they're getting Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, now that the financial statements have been presented to council. Uh, they need to be uh, uh, approved and received by uh, by council. By council and the province by May by May Six point two. Six point two. Yes, uh, thank you. This is for the uh, Ontario 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 Place the site in doesn't, doesn't really work due to the elevations or elevations. So, so council approved the application for a grant, a grant for the construction of a lift station. Uh, we received the approval for that for two million dollars, and it went out for tender. Uh, one company bid on it, and that is Bree Construction. And I'm asking that uh, we award this to Bree. Any any questions? So I'm, I'm just going to confirm that we got the right way then. Right it, it, way for that in process right now. There's a, a, a moment, 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 but it's very, very close to me. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the school district has approved uh, at their board level, uh, second registered. 
Okay. And then when is this when is pretty okay to start? Um, I'm certain at this point. But, uh, yeah, it's this needs to be done. So this project is pretty high priority. So, yeah. Good. Just check some questions. All in favor? Gary, Gary, thank you. Uh, so uh, table of contract. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll speak on the other yeah. 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 um, This is the, the, the point of fact bound ground that he felt from air and air samples on the ground. This conference is a program ground for the collaborative public safety program. One of the programs that they have under that is what they call a situation table. I'm just going to read the definition of this one. Clear, clear uh, situation uh, tables, tables uh, uh, help frontline front staff, staff, staff with safety, safety health, and health and service services to identify vulnerable people and collaboratively rapidly connect them to them services before they experience a negative and traumatic event. So, uh, so uh, something that I think is going to be very useful to our community. Um, uh, town staff uh, picked up on it, uh, applied for it, and received a grant to set up a local uh, situation table. Uh, uh, this is a fully, fully funded, funded grant, grant uh, to uh, set up this, 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 uh, this program. Uh, uh, the program, program means, means that we engage a net network, global network, global network uh, to provide uh, training to, uh, uh, to the participants. Uh, so it's a sort of single source of what they, uh, they, they approve. approve. And uh, yeah, so, so the so recommendation is to award the contract uh, to, to global network. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so the superintendent Jay Shaggy will be working on the program and then first his who got to the 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 has there been a frame of reference for the, the um, I don't think how it's going to work with that mentality? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we don't have to really Will it be a location in town? Or like where you go to? No, so no, so it's so, it's, so, so somebody, somebody somebody brings some somebody, 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 somebody forward, like this kind of Joe and Joe and Tom from that the situation situation table and can help try to try to get Joe and Joe into it. So it's just the assistant system that's maybe maybe the best match to show so Thank you. Uh, so we've got, uh, we've actually got two, two development permit uh, applications for new uh, business park development permit area. So uh, this is the first one. This is for um, the development of uh, Kettle Valley Storage's third lot in their storage facility. Um, this is kind of their, their beginning of developing that, that final lot. Um, uh, it's construction, construction of a uh, 140 uh, square, square meter steel, steel building, building. Uh, smaller, smaller, smaller start smaller to their start project up there, but uh, flat, flat site, flat large, site, large, large, large lot, lot um, uh, I think 
6,700 6, square meter site. Uh, the uh, building's going to be sited right uh, six meters from the front uh, property line, so utilizing the front flat space. Uh, they do have existing uh, RV and, and container storage uh, that they're moving. Uh, it's kind of a natural uh, bench on the property, and they're moving the outdoor storage to kind of the rear of the property. Um, looking at the, the development permit area guidelines, uh, uh, siting, uh, you know, easy uh, access, easy by, access by, by any transportation, transportation type, type. Um, uh, the, the front, front three, meter three meter landscape, landscape area, area. Yeah, yeah, will be maintained, maintained on David Brown, Brown Way, Way. Uh, uh, and, and of course large, large, large site and, and a small, small building, building to, to start with, so not much density being added to the, to the area. area. Uh, the design, uh, the design uh, uh, they are they using a uh, uh, corrugated uh, metal, metal uh, uh, structure. structure. Uh, the, uh, the, the DPA, DPA does uh, sway, uh, sway from, from larger, larger uh, metal, uh, metal uh, unarticulated, uh, unarticulated structures. structures. Um, I, don't um, I don't think this is a, a huge building and, building and, and, and close to the landscape area. area. I don't think it would be a uh, 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 dark gray in color with the earth tone. Trim, trim. Uh, the landscape, uh, the landscape uh, they are providing they are landscaping, landscaping along the, the, the David Brown Way uh, entrance uh, to, to the property. property. And, and uh, again, again, small piece, small five parking spots, spots that they need to, to have yeah, included there as well. well. So, so. This is this also, is also within, within our wildfire, wildfire protection, protection development, development area. area. Uh, that, uh, that permit, permit is um, uh, a technical yeah, permit that can be delegated to staff. staff so. So. Uh, with the, with this form of character, we'll have that second DP that will be accurate as well. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I would just say that they've done a good job so far keeping in the business park and dental park. They've done a good job of their uniformity. Thank you again. Thank you again. Another, Another uh, business, business part. part. Uh, development, development permit permit application. application. Uh, this uh, one is this for a uh, uh, new vet clinic, clinic um, uh, on Lori Ford Way. Uh, uh, again, a uh, large, large lot, lot uh, 6,300 uh, square, uh, square meters. meters. Uh, uh, this uh, is a really, really nice really looking nice development. development. Uh, uh, the, the, the Looking at the design, design and, and, and the, the, Designed design for the for the, uh, the building. Uh, this, uh, this one is a little more, more um, uh, in depth with some some more architectural features and and peaks and, and ridges. Uh, the design, design is, is, is primarily a uh, black building with the third tone uh, accents. Uh, landscaping. landscaping uh, they've uh, got, they've uh, got uh, two frontages to, to, to consider for Lori Curry Way and and the Princeton and Summerland Road. Road. Um, they've done a nice job of, of providing landscaping uh, on both uh, both three meter frontages, as well as having a, a nice uh, growth mature uh, uh, trees as well on the, the one side of the, the property. Um, park, park parking, they provide significant parking, uh, probably more than they, they even necessarily need to. Uh, they provided bike parking off of, off of the front of the building and, and they met the, the signage requirements as well. Uh, this one as well will we'll, we'll have a wildfire protection to, to be approved as well. They have, they have access to the highway? So they, um, they currently, their plan is for future access for that second one. Um, our, our bylaws uh, require or only allow one driveway onto the lower class road, which in this case is Lori Curry Way. Um, they are interested in, in applying for that, that drive through. They've included in, in this permit as, as future access, um, just some evaluation of, of traffic in the area needs to be done. Uh, and then that application for yeah, it be see if they get that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we discussed this last week. We've been working for a little bit. And so I decided 
That's part of the problem. <laughs> 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 I tried, I tried to nominate somebody else. 